Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I built this sliding door cabinet with drawers and shelves. As always, I have the printable building plans linked in the video description below if you want to build your own, but if you're ready to just see how it came together, let's go. Okay friends, we're diving right into the build because while this definitely isn't a difficult project, there are a lot of little tips, details, and notes to cover throughout the video. The first thing I did here was assemble the two and a half inch square corner posts. Now there are a lot of ways to assemble simple posts like this, but I used two by sixes. First, I cut four two by sixes to a little longer than I needed my posts so that I'd be able to trim everything down nice and clean after glue up. Two by sixes are actually five and a half inches wide, so I adjusted my table saw rip fence so that the center of the blade was about two and three quarter inches from the fence. So that way I could rip these pieces exactly in half. I know many of you will wonder if I plane these boards first and I did not. However, if you do have access to a planer, it would not be a bad idea to run these through just to give you a nice flat surface for glue up. I use wood glue to glue these up in pairs, keeping the rounded edges on the same side. Once the glue had dried, I brought these back to the table saw to trim them to final size. I trimmed the sides with the rounded edges just enough to make them square. Then I cut down the other side to make the post two and a half inches wide. So at that point, the posts were two and a half inches by three inches. So I needed to flip them 90 degrees and cut again to make them square. Remember these strips that I'm cutting off right here because I do keep these to use them for trim later. Now that the posts were square, I trimmed the ends down to get the final length. Added a little 45 degree taper to the front two posts just for some extra detail, but honestly, if I built this again, I would skip this. I just don't think it adds really a whole lot of anything to the overall design. Now the posts were ready, so I began cutting down the other materials to assemble the cabinet. You guys know how much I love 3 quarter inch birch plywood, so of course I cut down some of that and I also cut down some 2 by 2s as well to frame out the bottom shelf. There are a lot of pieces to this build, so just to keep the video simpler and more condensed, I've detailed everything in the printable plans linked below. I assembled the side panels first, and I kept things simple by just using pocket holes and screws for assembly. I drilled pocket holes along the ends of the plywood side panels and into the ends of the 2x2s. Then I screwed the plywood into the corner post flush to the inside edge and the 2x2s 4 inches up from the bottom of each leg. After I had one, I made a second so that I had two identical cabinet sides. So I have this one by six board. One by six boards are five and a half inches wide. The top piece where sliding door rail is going to mount, it needs to be four inches tall for the hardware to be able to move and the door to fit and everything. Four inches is not a standard board size. I actually need a one and a half inch piece to go down the middle. I'm going to cut those pieces from this one by six so that I don't have any wasted material. I need that four inch piece to be 31 inches long and the one and a half inch piece will be a little shorter. So what I'm gonna do is just cut a 31 inch piece off of this one by six board and then I'm gonna rip it to those widths that I need on the table saw. This project again is definitely not difficult, but the materials used in some cases here aren't standard, so it might be a little confusing. I've provided cut diagrams in the plans for a visual, but basically I cut a piece from my one by six board to rip into a four inch wide piece and a one and a half inch wide piece. Then I ripped my remaining one by six into two and a half inch strips to make one by threes. I knew there would be some questions about where the one by threes came from because there aren't any one by threes in the materials list. These are cut from the one by six in order to minimize wasted material. For the frame, I needed two by twos for the bottom, this four inch wide piece for the top, a one by three cut for the middle, and a plywood panel for the cabinet bottom. I drilled pocket holes into all of these pieces, then began assembling the frame. I used pocket hole screws to install the one by three at the front where the bottom of the cabinet will go. 
Then I screwed the four inch wide piece at the top flush to the front edge and added the cabinet bottom shelf. But I actually ended up having to remove this cabinet bottom shelf later to attach the other side of the one by three. So just ignore that for now. Then I added the two by twos at the bottom where they will frame out the bottom shelf. Bubby tried to provide some moral support while I flipped this piece over to attach the other side. He's really not a lot of help, but he is fun to have around. This is where I realized that I had to remove the bottom panel, so I unscrewed it to attach the other end of the 1x3, then reinstalled it. The top of this panel should be flush to the top of the 1x3 on the front. Once this was in place, I secured the other ends of the top four inch wide board and the bottom two by twos. And now things were starting to take shape. So remember me earlier telling you that I was gonna rip my one by six into a four inch piece and a one and a half inch piece approximately. This is actually a little bit less than one and a half, but it's fine. So the four inch piece went up here and the one and a half inch piece is going to be the divider. Now, full disclosure, because of the blade curve, this is slightly under one and a half inches wide. That's not a big deal. It's totally fine. I just centered it side to side at the top and the bottom and screwed it in place using pocket holes from the back side. So now I have this middle divider panel that I need to add in. I've faced the pocket holes on this panel towards the drawer side, so that way you're not gonna see it when you open the door. I installed the middle divider panel a little off center. Basically, I installed it so that it was flush with the right side of the front one by two. This will just save me from having to deal with using spacer blocks later when installing the drawer slides. This middle divider was secure on the bottom, but not at the top. So I added some top supports here to keep the panel square and also allow me to attach the top later. Now, I really should have attached four of these pieces, one at the front and one at the back in each of these sections. And if you stick around, you will see that I have to come back later and add the ones at the front when I realized that I needed them. Anyway, then I added the drawer dividers to evenly space out the right side of the cabinet into three equally spaced openings. So it might have been easier to install this at the point when I was putting like the side panels together and installing these pieces, just because at this point now my plywood has to be a very specific size. I carefully trimmed a perfectly sized panel to fit this opening. Now in the plans, I do suggest leaving off the back two by two until after you add the bottom panel. Doing it this way is just a little more forgiving than trying to fit a panel exactly in the opening. Once I made sure that my bottom shelf fit, I removed it to drill the pocket holes, then replaced it and secured it with screws. Now for the fun stuff, adding the X trim on the sides. I cut to fit one by threes and glued and nailed them at the top and the bottom of each side of the cabinet, but I also wanted to add these X's on the sides between them. For this, you can use one by twos, but I actually just used the leftover pieces that I had from trimming down my corner posts. I told you to remember those pieces. I would use them again later. I ripped them into one and a half inch wide strips. Now I've shared this tip before for easily finding angles using a speed square, but I'll share it again because it's really handy to have. Now forgive the vertical form video here, I originally made this for Instagram. First I marked the post where I wanted my X's to run between, then I lined up my piece and marked where it needed to be cut. I drew a line at these marks and used the pivot point of my speed square to figure out my first angle. Then I cut one end and marked where to cut the other at the same angle. Once I had this piece cut, I cut a second piece just like it and marked where they intersected. Again, I drew a line at the marks and used the speed square to find the angle. Once it was cut, I doubled it to complete the X, and now I can glue and nail these pieces in place. Once I had my pieces trimmed to size, I actually didn't have brad nails the correct length for this, so I just used tape to hold them in place until the wood glue dried. Clearly, I am flying by the seat of my pants with everything that I do. <laughs> 
Now we will use this speed score trick again later for when we make the door. So if you wanna see it again, hang with me here. At this point, I went ahead and painted what I had built so far. Now I started with primer and it was a lot of brush painting with all of this trim detail. I'll spare you the rest of this process, but if you wanna know how I paint my projects, you can check out my DIY haul tree bench video where I break down my painting process for you. After it was painted, I flipped it over and installed the drawer slides. Now I have a very detailed guide for installing drawer slides on my website that I will link below. These drawers will be inset, so I made sure to install these three quarter inch inset from the front edge. Then I assembled the drawer boxes. Now, many of you have asked for a video on building drawer boxes, and I plan to make a series of videos very soon. But in the meantime, I do have a written guide detailing the process on my website if you don't mind reading. I cut dados into the drawer box sides, then applied iron-on edge banding to the tops of the drawer boxes. That's totally optional. I just think that edge banding makes it look a little cleaner. Then I assembled three identical boxes using pocket holes and screws, making sure to add the quarter inch plywood bottoms into the dados before adding the fourth side. I added the drawer boxes into the cabinet and onto the slides. And again, my drawer building guide also details how to install them as well. I've linked that below. Now you may notice that I'm doing things in no logical order at this point. So just bear with me and feel free to mix up these steps in an order that makes more sense. But once I installed the drawer boxes, I removed them. Then I flipped this cabinet over to route out a rabbit on the back side to install a back panel. Now, I have a personal pet peeve about adding back panels behind drawers. I'm very aware that many people think that I'm crazy for that, and that's fine. I didn't wanna add a back over the drawers, I only wanted to add one over the shelf section of the project. And I certainly could just staple or nail a back panel on here, but since I wasn't adding it over the entire piece, I decided to cut a rabbit so that the panel would sit flush inside. I really didn't want to chisel out the square corners, so instead I just used a jigsaw to round the corners of my panel before stapling it in place. I wanted the door and drawers to have a heavy texture to give it more of a rustic feel. So I think I'm just gonna use cedar fence pickets for the drawer fronts. This is like a one by six, so it's five and a half inches wide. Obviously this is bigger than five and a half inches wide. So I'm just gonna like piece the drawer fronts together. These cedar fence pickets are really pretty after they've been sanded. So I thought that they'd be perfect here. I cut to fit pieces of fence pickets for all three drawer fronts. Now, just an FYI, there's usually quite a bit of variation in these boards, so I advise cutting to fit since they're not all the same width. Once I made sure that everything fit, I used a jigsaw to cut out a section across the top of each drawer front. This will allow me to have a way to open the drawers without using any hardware, like a knob or a pull. The sliding door will likely interfere with any kind of hardware that you try to add, so you need another way to open them. Now, these are pretty rough, so be sure to sand them well. I went over mine quickly with just 100 grit sandpaper to clean them up, but I didn't sand so much that they smoothed them completely out. I still wanted some of the rough texture. Then I glued the pieces onto the front of the drawer boxes. And again, I didn't have the right length brad nails, so I carefully placed the pieces, then removed the drawer box, trying really hard not to move the pieces of the front. I set these aside so that they could dry, and then I went to the store and got the right brad nails and came back later just to add some for extra security. I really recommend having the right nails before starting the gluing process. Anyway, once the glue had dried, I put the drawers back in and nailed the fronts in several places. Now for the top. This is where I told you that I would come back and add some extra supports at the front. I needed these here to be able to secure the top panel along the front edge. I cut the top from 3 quarter inch plywood and applied edge banding on the sides and the front. I used wood screws through the top supports to secure it in several places. Now finally, the door. This was actually my favorite part. I built the door from cedar fence pickets just like the drawer fronts. 
I trimmed three full width pieces for the back of the door, then I cut a piece the width of these boards and ripped it in half. I glued and nailed one at the top and one at the bottom. Then I ripped another piece in half to frame out the sides. For the X in the middle, I ripped some one and a half inch strips and again used the speed square to figure these angles. I always recommend just marking where to cut versus measuring. It's usually easier and more accurate, especially in these weird cases with these odd angles. I glued and nailed these pieces in place, then I mixed up a little wood glue and sawdust to fill these nail holes. I picked up a sliding door hardware kit from Amazon for this project. I used this once before on another sliding door cabinet build and it worked really well. I've linked the exact one that I used in the video description so you can check it out. I laid out the door and the rail and kind of test fit everything to see where to place it so that the rollers wouldn't interfere with the top. Now the kit comes with instructions, but they're really not that helpful. So if you're wondering what I did, I installed the rail about one and seven eighths inches down from the top. I pre-drilled the holes, then screwed it in place with the spacers and the screws included in the kit. Then I installed the rollers onto the door so that the bottom edge was three and five eighths inches down from the top of the door. Now, different styles may vary, so double check that that will work in your case, but it worked perfect in here. Now, the kit comes with these little spacer things to prevent the doors from falling off the rail. I installed them on the outside of the door, but you'll see later that I realized they needed to be installed on the inside of the rollers. The way that these work is basically you rotate them out of the way so you can hang the door, then you rotate them back so that when you lift up, it can't come off the rail. However, these should be inside the rollers because when you add the stopper blocks on the rail, if they're on the outside, they'll bump into them. Whoops. <laughs> Don't worry, I did switch them. For the bottom, the kit also comes with a piece to prevent the door from swinging back and forth. This is two parts. One piece screws to the cabinet and the other piece screws onto it and adjust front to back to accommodate the thickness of your door. I adjusted the stop blocks on the end of the rail to make sure that the door didn't go so far that it would pop out of this bottom piece. The very last part of this project was simply drilling shelf pin holes to be able to install adjustable shelves using shelf pins. And finally, this project was complete. I am so excited with how this turned out. I know that it was a long video with lots of information, but all in all, it's a fairly simple project and these cedar fence pickets really add some nice character. It also smells really good. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching this project come together. And if you wanna build one of your own, don't forget to check out the building plans linked in the video description. If you wanna see what's coming next, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow along. Thanks so much for watching friends. And until next time, happy building.